Hello everyone and welcome back to Force Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. We are here at the KSC at nighttime and we are about to decide what we're going to do today. Well, let's, it's too hard to decide between these, so let's just go to the tracking station and see which planet is up next. Hmm, well, oddly enough we're at a Duna window, but I don't think there's anything for Duna. Launch a vessel with at least four wheels. Land a vessel. Well, you know what? Okay, land a vessel on Duna with a current mass over 300 tons. Well, that's one thing. And... Sure, maybe we should do that. Though, I, I wonder if we should just send a rover in order to check out whether that monument is still there. I've been wondering about that. So, yeah, I mean, I still have an open question whether once we visited a monument and the little marker goes away, whether the monument is still there. Now, on Duna, we still have our probes at the location of the monument, so we know where it is even without the marker. So, I do want to see if we can visit it. Land a vessel on Duna for current mass over 300 tons. Oh, uh, well, I guess we're making a big rocket. All right. Because we're at the Duna window, we might as well try it. Should we pack a... Maybe we should pack a lander as well. I mean, a rover as well. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's got to be 300 tons. We might as well. Okay. So that's our plan. Maybe they'll give us a rover on Duna contract if we've driven a rover on Kerbin or something. Okay. So, well, we've got a rover made. It looks like a legit rover. Of some sort. We don't have to have person a person on it. And we can have headlights. For the first time I'm putting lights on something. Okay, it's already happy with this. But we might as well turn on the light. Oh. No no. Hmm. Well, uh somebody had asked about the lights and I'm gonna say they seem to blow out immediately. They, they briefly lit. Oh, you have to revert to launch or save or reload to fix the lights. Brakes. Oh! Okay, well, we fulfilled the rover contract. Let's just skip the rover thing. <laughs> it took away my rover, and... I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm fickle, and have a short attention span. So, we'll just submit that, and let's get on with the 300 ton thing. Retire. I'm more interested in seeing whether we get some other contract because we've done this. Like, send a rover to somewhere. Okay, we got that 40 science. Uh, Curb-wide tour. Launch a vessel with a lander can and perform a crew observation at Cappy Rock. Are we supposed to drive there? I mean... I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it looks like lander can, and we we could we could just land there. Well, anyway, that's a Kerbin Kerbin thing. But maybe we have to do that before we get rovers at a different location, like Duna. Okay, so 300 tons. How do we get 300 tons and get all to Duna? Well, that's 288. So let's start with that. <laughs> I mean, might as well, right? That sounds straightforward. 280 tons right there. Maybe we should have a return pod. Uh, so let's just get our standard return pod that we've been using like with the Dreads mission. We'll land all 300 tons. It's just that we're going to use some of that fuel to return later. Okay, so that's... That's 346 tons. But... When you think about it, it's gonna be tough to land this on Duna. Ah, uh, you know what? For this, we'll need the big landing legs. Like territory. Oversized landing. Yep, alright, 5,000 science. We're only getting 2,400 for it, but we're spending 5,000 science. Alright. So, do the big landing legs look nice and big on this? I mean, they're not huge. Let me just see. Uh, we, 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 we want to land on the bottom of this for stability's sake, so we want it sort of like that. That'll help, but it's not super guaranteed to be stable. Maybe we should have a half tank and others strapped on to make it less tall. 
maybe something more like this. And then we'll have the engines on the side. But see, now we're less than 300 and I'm planning to use some of the fuel for landing, so that's a little bit of a pinch. Uh, in fact, you know what? Maybe. maybe uh, should we put them here or out there? I don't know. We're now 400 tons. Okay, that might be overdoing it a bit. But, you know. Mm, so, for Duna, we need... 3,000 kilonewtons of thrust altogether. What? What? Starts weight ratio of 3. That's not right. Where is it getting a thrust weight ratio of 3 here? 0.53. That's what I thought. <laughs> okay, so... No, it's because of the launch escape system, it's measuring from the launch... Even the launch escape system doesn't give that much. Well, that's enough thrust weight ratio, especially if we, like, underfuel these. But I can't lock them, but they're not gonna refill from the clamps, right? How do we get 400... tons? Did I just not have these filled? <laughs> that's 335. Hmm. That then the dry mass is valuable to us. So it's okay. Okay, well obviously our landing legs don't extend- Well, if we're not gonna fuel these all- uh, If we're not gonna fuel these all the way, let me change which tank we use there. I can't lock tanks, otherwise I'd check how much delta V we have while reserving 300 tons of mass. There's no point trying to put parachutes on this, is there? We're assuming probably that we have to land without the parachutes. Now, air brakes could help. I don't know. I haven't really tested the effectiveness of air brakes particularly. Obviously, we are not going we can't use more than 128 tons for the landing. Otherwise, we will not be 300 tons. So, given that, I can calculate how much delta V that is, I suppose. 1,117. 1,117 meters per second of delta V. As long as we want to reserve 300 tons. However, I forgot about the launch escape system. So, uh, something like, let's say 1,000. Okay, so, that's what we have for landing. And then I'm going to put a large decoupler here. We don't have an extra large right now. And then we're going to put more extra large tanks for the launch. If only they didn't come with the mounts, that'd be handy. I really don't want that mount there. Then I'd put two. So we're going to have four boosters and we're going to want them capable of launching us to orbit. Okay, and then of course... Of course... We have those. Now, I mean, I could, instead of the Rhino, I've used a Swerve. We actually have it. But I feel like, even though it would take less fuel, it's only got 70 tons of thrust. But maybe that's worth it. That's only 752. Oh, there's the extra large hydrogen tanks. 6,000 we need for them. Oh, I want that Spheratron. 2,500 we need to get that, so even our mission won't be enough. 2,850 doesn't seem like enough, and we also don't have enough thrust to weight ratio. Maybe we should have um, thinner tanks, <laughs> that's funny, um, and more boosters. Okay, so now we have a good thrust weight ratio, we just don't have the delta V. Let me just toss these on and see what happens. Now it says 5,244. So that's not true. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, I mean, if we have extra thrust weight ratio, we can extend this tank. I'm not putting any struts, by the way. <laughs> so we could have more 
tankage here so that the boosters don't look quite so weird. Okay, so now this has barely a thrust weight ratio of one and wouldn't be able to lift off very well. I thought about putting two boosters a piece, but that seems like it's going too far. <laughs> that seems like it's going too far. We don't need that. It'll be fine. Okay, this says that says two point oh this says one point four eight. That's what I was expecting. I was expecting 1.48. Do you agree now? Okay, fine. You agree now. I uh, I want to see what happens if we don't put launch clamps. <laughs> hmm. We're sending somebody. Because otherwise there's no point having it capable of coming back, I suppose. There's no way Tim is going to be able to get in here if Tim actually gets out, right? Uh All right, fine. Uh but we'll revert if the Kraken strikes on the pad. Uh, yeah, okay. There's your explosions. Are you not entertained? <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, let's revert to VAB there. Might be perfectly stable if we brought it out again, but let's put launch clamps at least. Let's see if launch clamps are an improvement. Um, those skippers are sort of breaking loose too early. Well, okay, three of them. Alright, we'll strut those. This is trivial. We'll, we'll just slap these on. I was also interested to see whether the struts would solve the problem. Might have, or might not have, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna try to time warp to daylight out of curiosity uh, about what happens when it comes out of time warp. All right, seems stable to me. All right, let's go. Well, I guess we should go for the entire countdown. It's a little bit up above the pad. Not to mention the actual exhaust vents. Whoa! Okay, that was not a view I needed. Suddenly went to that bottom view. I was not looking to get that up close and personal with the exhaust, thank you. A mountain of power here. 300 tons on Duna. Can we do it? I not only want to do it, I want to make sure that we didn't do too much. <laughs> we don't want to over deliver here. Alright, getting ready for booster separation. And off they go. Please don't kill anything. Alright. Didn't quite get the sound from those on separation that we normally would, and now we can't even hear the engines. It's given up on sound for this rocket. I'm keeping the launch escape system because it's protecting... I don't know if we need a docking port, but it's protecting the docking port from overheating. We'll definitely want these to deorbit. Okay. Well, separation, separation. We're going off very, very slowly. Oh, something's over. No, no, don't overheat. Don't overheat, whatever you are. What are you? One of the solar panels? Oh, whatever. <laughs> 
Well, we're in space. Let's get rid of the launch escape system. You're extended, you're not going over here. Heat, right? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. Okay, our reaction wheel clearly can't turn us very well. We're still suborbital, technically. Should have packed more batteries, too. Uh, but anyway, let's see. Where would we be burning for Duna? Oh, right about our impact point. So, uh, we probably need to actually make orbit. Okay, we are now in orbit. Okay, well, that gets us uh, Duna encounter, but uh, we'll probably have to fix it because of that. Uh, we're getting boosted a little bit by the moon, so we'll be finicky. We're using more Delta V out of this than I intended. Uh, I probably should have started already. Okay, trying Fizz Orb. It really would be more efficient just to be prograde. Oh, but I can't follow that. Alright, well... Shall we see what it's actually doing? Alright. First thing, I was making sure that we would not be crashing into the moon. 800. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll not do any more. We have a moon periapsis. We'll get past the moon first and then figure it out. Do we want to aero capture with a 300 ton object? Hmm. We'll decide that after this burn. I'll plot a uh, capture burn and see how much it is, and then work from there. But anyway, this correction with 108 meters per second will get us our arrival at Duna. So let's do this. We're doing a very different kind of science than normal. Heavyweight science. Are you even trying to use that torque up there, Tim? Ah, uh, it's a little bit low. Ah, uh, I didn't want to crash. Okay. And it doesn't let me make a maneuver to see how much Delta V we're going to take. Alright, well, we'll leave it there for now. Alright, on to Duna. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know whether I should be inside the atmosphere or outside the atmosphere. Probably outside the atmosphere. Let's see how much it takes to capture. We've got 330. Okay, so it's going to take a lot to capture there. So... We're not going to do that. Um, we'll just do just enough... Like that. Um, I'd really like it over our landing spot, but maybe this 300 ton thing will land, take off again, and then land at that spot. <laughs> maybe maybe that's a better plan. We've got a lot of Delta V after all, because we're 300 tons, so... Now I'll need substantial time to actually turn, so... Well, actually, we're not that far away from the node. Now, I could try and bring this orbit down so that we land in daylight. Or... I mean, we could try to land at that location directly, or we could just not. Or maybe I can, at Apoapsis, turn our orbit for some trivial amount to make sure we're in daylight. I'll go with 23, 24 kilometers as our periapsis and see if that brings us down. 
Oh no. Okay, well, no, the solar panels need to come in. Did, did none of them survive? I guess none of them survived. Well, we can always recharge by running the engines. Okay, well, we do have some flame effects. Thermal effects are... are here. We're not slowing down. Air brakes. Yeah, we we're, we're actually sped up a bit with respect to the surface. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm gonna try and use some thrust. This is to guarantee that we're gonna come down, though, more than anything else. Oh, I don't know if that actually guarantees it. Maybe we'll just go around. Three hundred and seventy six point eight nine tons, I think. Uh oh. Aerodynamics. Why? Okay, we, we should probably move the fuel down if that's, that's not how you do that. If only right clicking actually let you move fuel. I don't think we can do any more. Alright, I guess that's the best we can do. Heat indicators are gone. Uh, oh, they're back. Uh oh, our electric charge. Um, hmm. Let's just not pay attention to that for a sec. We'll have to run the engines a little bit. Okay. Here we go again. Can we come down this time? Is it gonna slow us down at all? 75 tons to work with. That's about 700 meters per second. No, we are already at 4x time warp. No, oh, it's deviating though. No, I moved the fuel down. Maybe the air brakes are just like that. Um, maybe I should put them higher up. Wish I could have fuel priority. So that we could drain the top tanks first. Well, at least at this angle, it's better to slow down, but we can't stay like this and land. No, we're coming down. The number we're watching out for there is 4,800. At that point, we're probably below 300 tons. Come on, atmosphere. Slow us down. It needs to do at least 300 meters per second of work. I can't time warp any faster than this. Yep, we did not get the atmosphere slowing us down enough to make this work out, I don't think. I can't see anything. We're already under 300 tons. Uh... Well, gosh darn it. Um, we got 265 tons on the surface of Duna. But clearly we need some work here to actually get more down. I don't think... I don't think just reloading and doing this again is going to change the situation. I think we're going to need to design things a little bit differently. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was I was doing that landing in 4x. I should have come out. I keep leaving it in 4x fizz warp. Uh, it would have been better not to be in fizz warp. 
I don't think there's any point leaving it here. And we probably ultimately want Tim C back and not dead. So we should probably uh, get Tim C back into orbit. So that Tim C will be available. Otherwise, if we leave it on the surface, there's a chance that some Kraken would strike and Tim C will be destroyed. So let's get it back into orbit and we'll work from there. We'll leave Tim C here because we could use this fuel if we actually want to dock to, to it, but. Uh, Tim C will temporarily be in charge of a depot, I think. Because we've got a lot of fuel here and uh, we only need about 1000 meters per second to actually get Tim back. Then again, Tim doesn't have any electric charge except by running the skippers, so it's a thought. But this doesn't consume electric charge unless it's using the reaction wheel. Okay, we are in orbit. And we are going to live, leave Tim here for now. Mission Control definitely didn't pop up with a little thing that says, well, you got close enough to 300 tons. It, it means... It means 300 tons when it says 300 tons. So, with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.